911 operators, what's the strangest, serious emergency you've heard? I answered the phone and gave my usual, 911, do you need police, fire, or ambulance? And the person on the other end just started screaming, Bees! Bees! I assumed that the bees were neither mugging him nor on fire, so I put it through to ambulance because what the frick even? And now there's coffee all over my desk and my supervisor is looking at me weirdly. Thank you. 911, what's your emergency? There's a pig in the road. A big one. Sir, where are you? At the stoplight. It's the biggest gosh darn pig I've ever seen. Get someone in here now. This is in a one stoplight town and the bar is near the intersection. How big is the pig? About the size of a Volkswagen. How much have you had to drink? I'm not frickin' drunk. It's a giant pig the size of a small car. What is wrong with you people? The officers showed up to find a full-grown hippo that had escaped from the local wild animal park. It was a big frickin' pig, I guess. FYI, this was at 2.30am when the bars closed. I get a lot of calls from elderly people hallucinating because of UTIs. One woman had been following CPR instructions, and when the crew arrived, she was doing very gentle chest compressions on her slightly confused, but very much alive cat. Wait, UTIs can make you hallucinate? Mostly in older people, weakened immune systems and all that makes it worse. The emergency itself wasn't particularly strange, bleeding in the hoo-ha during pregnancy, but I did get to listen in on the following exchange. So she's bleeding now? Yep. Where's she bleeding from? Her bottom part. Which bottom part, sir? I need you to be specific. Her rectum. Front part. Her what? Sir, is she bleeding from the rectum or from the front? Gosh darn it, she's bleeding from her hoo-ha hole. I think it's impossible to read that last line without a heavy southern accent. I once had a radiologist refer to my groin as my private area. Like, dude, you're a medical professional and I'm 30. I can handle you saying the correct medical term for my junk. And ironically, to post that story on YouTube, I had to not use the correct term while writing the script. Oh, the strange ironies of online storytelling. We had a lady who would call all the time about people in her yard or on her house, usually doing nasty things, and it was always a false alarm. The lady had been calling since way before I got my job, and even now, after I've switched agencies, she's probably still calling. She's mental, but not a danger to herself or others yet, so no real need to commit her involuntarily. Well, one day we get a call from her about a man at her house causing the troubles to her. My supervisor, who had answered the call, finally got fed up and asked to speak to the man. To everyone's surprise, the woman handed the phone over to the man and there was someone there. It was her brother and he was trying to get her committed. We ended up, I believe, asking him to leave the property because he couldn't have her committed against her will at the time. It just goes to show you that crazy doesn't always mean wrong. A family member who was working at an emergency room said the following case came about a month ago. A guy got high on angel dust and suddenly thought to himself, Hmm, I'm a bit hungry and I'd like to have some eggs. Proceeds to cut out one of his testes and fry it in a frying pan. His girlfriend walks in while he's doing that and goes, What the hell? At which point he's like, Oh, whoops, sorry, and tries to put his fried nut back inside the purse. Then he was in the hospital. I don't know the result, but I can guess. This made my balls shrivel up into my body, and I'm a female. Jesus. I've got one for you. Not 911, but it'll tie together. So I worked for an alarm monitoring company. I got an inbound call in the middle of the night from somewhere in Philadelphia. The guy on the line sounds really out of it. Drunk, maybe? My first thought that it was someone calling in to cancel a false alarm. Messed up voice was them waking from sleep. Not uncommon. Some alarms start going off in my head. The guy wasn't making a whole lot of sense, and it's really hard to get basic information out of him. Eventually, I piece together that he's a gas station worker and he's been shot. For some reason, he dialed the alarm company instead of 911. We weren't even his alarm company. There was probably an old sticker in the shop somewhere, so I've got no info on this guy. Mind you, we don't have any magical reverse phone lookup system, and our systems are locked down, such that we can't access a web browser. Genius, I know. Pulled out my phone, also not allowed, and managed to look up a gas station with the inbound number in Philly. Called 911 and got police and medical out there. No idea how it ultimately shook out. Stayed on the line, keeping the guy conscious and talking until they got there, and then I disconnected. Oh my god. Thank god you were able to help. Did they switch alarm companies? I mean, in all fairness, that company earned their business after that. 
My sister is an emergency medical technician in a small rural town. Apparently there's been more than one call about horses collapsing and hurting their rider or handler with broken arms, legs, trapped under horses, etc. When she was new to it, someone just described it as a collapsed horse and she thought they were supposed to treat the horse's condition. Emergency medical service responds to a call where a man reported having multiple potatoes stuck up his butt. Not red potatoes, we're talking about these big brown suckers. The kicker was, I was washing my potatoes in the shower when I slipped and fell and all of the potatoes went up there. What? I wouldn't even try to say I fell on it. I know nobody would believe me and I'd look like a bigger idiot. I'd just own it and the dispatchers would probably make a little less fun of me behind my back. See, in a way you're right, but at this point with all these stories I've read, I'd feel obligated to say I fell on whatever it is that's stuck up there. Like, it's just the thing you're supposed to do. I'm not some uncivilized savage. I live in a society with rules and stuff. My mom was a dispatcher for 20 plus years. The eeriest call she ever told me about was one that started off with no voice, only breathing. She kept asking yes or no questions, working out a system to guess what was going on. Eventually, he could talk a little bit and said the person who hurt him was still there. So the officers went in with guns drawn. He'd said the person was there but hadn't specified that they were dead. Turns out the guy couldn't talk because his throat was sliced, which he had done to himself, to make it look like his wife, whom he had just shot, had attacked him first. Did he survive to be put in jail? He did survive. She didn't follow the case too much, but enough to know they figured out how it actually happened. I imagine he got convicted. Your sentence, she didn't follow the case too much, is a sign of a true veteran dispatcher. People are always shocked when they ask, so what happened after they got arrested or went to hospital? And I say, I don't really know. I've been dispatching for 17 years, and I rarely follow up on my calls. When the call is over, I'm done with it. I've been dispatching for four years, and I'm adopting a similar policy. Every time I followed up on a call, it's been bad news. CPR instructions to a 14-year-old girl who found her mum in the bathroom? She survived to the hospital, but was brain dead. Oof. And I imagine that you only see so many frankly absurd stories in your job before they all start blurring together eventually. Like in this job that the narrator does. I got dispatched for neck pain. I got there and found out the couple were doing the deed on a couch when the female heard a large pop in her head, followed by a splitting headache and nausea. We transport and after a CT scan find out that she somehow developed a tear in her arachnoid meningeal tissue. Serious stuff, but humorous and odd. Wow, he almost literally fricked her brains out. Not sure if that makes him a legend or a monster. A similar thing happened to me. We were in some weird position and I wanted him to pull up on my head. I hear this loud crack and then debilitating pain. We both worked at the same hospital and it was quite embarrassing to have to explain that my boyfriend may have broken my neck while doing some weird stuff. Turns out it wasn't broken, but there was some trauma. I was told by his boss to keep it strictly vanilla for a little while. No rough stuff. I once dispatched a helicopter for a woman who got gored by a reindeer. Apparently there is a reindeer farm for tourists nearby and she tried to kiss one. My pilot and flight crew laughed at the MOI and asked three times for them to repeat themselves. I responded to a man in his whitey tighties standing on the yellow lines in the middle of the road. Arrived on the scene to find this to be true. The reason he was in the middle of the road was to practice his karate moves on cars. Dispatch was having a hard time keeping from laughing. This reminds me of the guy I went to college with. He had Asperger's, so his social awareness was not the best, and he would often practice karate moves just outside the elevator door. He was fully clothed, though. A bloke I knew did the same thing as well, but only when he was high. He would throw kicks and punches while in hallways, on the train platform, and came at you throwing punches to test you. The very first emergency call I took by myself during training. The trainer was hooked into my phone and could jump in whenever. I answered the phone while my trainer was trying to grab a cup of coffee from the machine. Long cords, and as soon as the phone connected there was what sounded like an explosion and people screaming all over the place. Scared the crap out of my trainer who sprinted back to the desk thinking that I'd just picked up some huge disaster or accident. He took over the call and started asking questions. And it turns out that what we'd heard was just rushing water from a hot water heater that had ruptured and was spewing water all over these two girls' apartment. And they were freaking out not knowing what to do about it. Water tip. Make sure you know where the water shutoff is and make sure it works. You don't want to find out it's broken when water starts shooting out of your water heater. We heard a strange noise at my old house. A hot water pipe cracked and leaked for five days before I found the source of the noise. 
30,000 gallons of water in the bill that month. Luckily, it was the middle of nowhere Pennsylvania, so my bill went from 30 to 200 for one month. But I'm sure that's the reason the town put notices to conserve water for the rest of the summer. Bonus story, had a similar call a few years later, picked up to a bunch of people being loud, sounding panicked, and talking about someone being locked in a car. I thought it was a child locked in a car, a very high-priority phone call for my agency, due to being in Florida and a few recent deaths. So I put the call in as urgent, while trying to get anyone on the phone to actually talk to me. But then I hear a door open and someone in the background screams, It's out! The chicken is free! And the phone disconnected. Florida. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. The first call I took was from a blind elderly male. He called because he had found his son on the floor of the bathroom. The son wasn't responding, so I had the man tilt his head back and listen for breath. Nothing. He said he was warm and had talked with him less than 20 minutes prior, so I guided him through CPR. Compressions only because of the circumstances. He lived in a rural part of our county and we were low on rigs, so we did this for about 12 minutes before help arrived on the scene. EMS goes inside and immediately asks for PD. This isn't unusual. Sometimes loved ones can't or don't want to believe that it's too late, so we go through the motions until a trained eye is there. PD gets there and asks for a detective. This is also not unusual for younger deaths. Two hours later, and still there, it piques my curiosity. I called the first officer that arrived and found out that the poor man had been doing CPR on his now mostly headless son. He had been taking a nap and his son had taken his own life with a shotgun. It woke him up, but not quick enough for it to register as a gunshot. When I asked him to tilt his head back, he did so by using his chin, which was still there. I think it worked out for the best because he had support there when he learned the truth. And it didn't make my job any tougher, but it definitely made for an unusual start to my dispatch career. I'm the son of the caller. My dad called 911 late one night to report hitting a six-foot-tall chicken while driving and running off into a ditch. He had just crashed his car and his voice was a bit shaky on the phone, so the operator asked him to repeat himself a couple of times and then promised to send someone to help. The first cop on the scene got out of his car with a breathalyzer in hand. By the time he got to the back of my dad's car, he was laughing hysterically over his radio, telling people it wasn't a DUI. My dad had actually hit a six-foot-tall chicken. And that's the story about the night my dad and all the local cops learned about emu farming. Consider me educated that for some reason people apparently keep emus in the United States. I can't imagine what for, but lesson learned. According to Vicaspediad, emus belong to a ratite group and have high economic value for their meat, eggs, oil, skin, and feathers. The birds are adaptable to varied climatic conditions. Best memorable call I had was when I was still training. It was a few days into starting to take 911 calls on my own, and my trainer just listened in, and I got a very calm lady asking for paramedics. I asked her for the address and why she was calling. Uh, my son cut off his Johnson. I parroted what I'd heard back while mentally I was going, Excuse me, what? The lady confirms that her son cut off his eggplant with a knife and there was blood everywhere. Now, the whole room is bustling getting the resources I need for this guy with a knife who is probably bleeding out. I ask her where her son is in the house and where the knife is. When the lady can't really answer my questions, that's when I knew something was up. She has no idea where he is and she never saw him cut anything off. So I ask how she knew her son did this and she replies, I have visions and revelations. I can see the knife. Oh boy. It becomes a back and forth figuring out who her son is and if anyone's even hurt. The lady even gave a neighbor's address instead of her own. Eventually, we find her son's phone number through associations. The guy is actually just two years younger than her and a roommate. So my supervisor hops on the phone and calls the guy and cuts to the chase. Is this so-and-so? Did you cut off your Johnson? Spoiler alert, his member was still attached to his body. This was almost four years ago, and I still bring it up to curious new trainees when they ask what their strangest case was. Otherwise, the few other calls I remember... A substance addict couple birthing their baby in a bathtub. Child protection services got involved real quick on that one. Double homicide. I talked to the teenage girl that managed to run out of the house after an adult roommate shot and killed mum and the teen's boyfriend. The teen thankfully wasn't hurt and ran to a neighbor's house. She vividly remembered every detail and was very calm until officers were with her. She was a stellar RP and was very mature. I'm very proud of her keeping herself collected after seeing everything that went down. 
I hope her life has turned for the better since then. Someone taking their life on the phone. My first one, an older guy called in from the house phone and very calmly started telling me the address, name, and his date of birth. He proceeded to say to tell his family he couldn't take it anymore and asked us to turn off his front porch light when we arrived. He also gave us next of kin info. I tried talking to him, but he didn't even acknowledge me. He had made up his mind. I heard a metallic bang immediately after he gave me the last bit of his instructions. First, I'd thought it was a metal chair or a step stool falling onto the tile floor. I kept an open line until officers were with him, confirming a self-inflicted gunshot wound through the left temple. The guy had a ton of health problems and just couldn't take it anymore. I can vividly remember the raspy and scratchy sounds I heard during the open line, which I believe were gasps, death rattles, and body twitches. He shot himself outside so his family didn't have to deal with cleanup. And of course, we had no other callers reporting shots fired in the area. My dad works in an emergency room, and one time he had to treat someone who had been attacked by an owl. The owl was unconscious on the side of the road, and she thought it was dead. Because she didn't want the children of the school bus to see the dead owl, she decided the best course of action would be to put the owl in the back of her car. Unfortunately, the owl wasn't dead. It woke up and attacked her. My redneck uncle had the same thing happen to him. He hit a deer with his truck and thought it was dead then put it in the back of the truck. Free venison. The deer wakes up and freaks out. The truck was definitely not unscathed. That happened to my cousin with a squirrel. He thought it was dead until he picked it up. That had to be an embarrassing doctor visit. Okay, so my friend is a former 911 operator and she told me that she got this call from what sounded like an old man. He was telling her that it's been a while and she should come back over. Like, hey, it's been so long. I miss you. Do you still remember the address? 123 Street, remember? She assumed that he was just senile or something. Turns out he had someone in his house and he didn't want them to know he was calling 911. For clarification, she did dispatch someone just in case the old man was incapable of taking care of himself, because she thought he was senile and that's how they found out. I feel like as a 911 operator, if you hear cryptic messages like this, it'd be a dead giveaway that someone was attempting to relay the address to you. I hope if I'm ever in this situation, the 911 operator has half a brain and isn't like, Huh? What? My soon-to-be mother-in-law got a call that a guy and his roommate were doing substances. Smack. And the caller's friend had OD'd. So this absolute mensa hooks up a couple of wires to the inside of a toaster, turns the toaster on, and attaches the wires to his unconscious friend's testes. Honestly, not sure if it actually electrocuted the unconscious guy, but the caller definitely seemed to think it would wake his friend up. My mother-in-law's response? Sir, please don't do that again. Not me, but my cousin. She had this lady who would call often and make up stories, most likely due to loneliness but they still had to send someone out every time, so one day when they got a call from her, they figured it would be another one of those calls. She said, 911, what's your emergency? Oh, there's a lion in my living room. There's a lion in your living room. What's it doing? She paused to ask us what it's doing. I don't know, just standing there. Can you send someone over? It turned out there was actually a lion cub in her living room that had escaped from the circus or something nearby. The worst part about that story is that you had to take the woman's calls more seriously in the future, and her just leaning over to ask what its intentions were are the cherry on the cake. We got a call from a woman having severe abdominal pains. Simple enough. We asked the normal questions. Are you feeling faint? Are you vomiting blood? Stuff like that. Then we asked if it was traumatic or not. Well... She eventually tells us that she had a tampon stuck inside of her for more than 20 days, and she thinks that might be why she's hurting. Bonus story, I heard someone else's funny story. This guy and his wife were playing around with various vegetables, and the guy gets a carrot lodged up his... You know where he got it lodged up. So they tried to remove it so that they wouldn't have to call 911. She used a pair of burger tongs and grabbed onto something and pulled, but she was actually pulling his intestines. Fun. If you get something stuck, just call 911. I've heard it all before. I don't care that you have a vegetable garden in your rectum. I just want to get you help. Thank you for telling me that second story. I'm gonna go throw up now. Nothing really jumps out to me as my strangest story. I can think of the worst, scariest, dumbest, and most infuriating, though. Some of my good ones are... People saying they've locked themselves inside their car. Someone getting ripped off by a working girl. Someone stealing the caller's things. By things, they mean a safe full of green herb. A mugger going around hitting people in the neck with a taser, yelling, Surprise, motherfucker! 
in a deep voice and then taking their phones and wallets. So many 911 calls with people essentially calling and getting themselves arrested because they were in the wrong and not the person they'd called the police on. A guy going jogging along the beach and coming back to find his car gone, and while driving him home after taking a report, we drove by it. He had forgotten where he parked. Trying to let a guy off who was obviously up to some shady stuff, telling him and his girlfriend to just go and rent a room and rethink their lives. They stole the cop's cell phone, he made a call for them because their phone was dead, and ended up having a crap ton of crystal in his car when they caught up to him later. And one guy who got into a fight with a bunch of ducks started losing, tried jumping a fence, slipping and tearing his ball bag open on said fence. Thinking about it, I do have one. Her boyfriend was bleeding in the shower. I tried to get her to say where and how. She beats around the bush a bit and doesn't come right out. We got the paramedic to tell us afterwards. She's a nurse and they were fooling around. She had tried to catheterize him while he was hard and ended up puncturing something and they couldn't get the bleeding to stop. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.